Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. So we're still going to work with the fact that the humidity ratio is the same at state two and state one. We're basically going to work with state one. But there's some things that we need to recall. First of all, what is the definition of the humidity ratio or specific humidity? Those can be used interchangeably. Well, it's the mass of water divided by the mass of air, right? It's pounds of water per pound of dry air. And both of these can be assumed to be at least roughly an ideal gas. So let's remember the ideal gas law, PV equals MRT. And you may be saying, hey, wait a minute, it's PV equals NRT. And I'll remind you, you use PV equals NRT, N being the number of moles, when you're using R star, or the universal gas constant here. On the other hand, you use PV equals MRT, like we're going to do here, when the R that you're using is the specific R for a particular gas. And this value of R is basically just R star divided by the molecular weight, but you can look it up from a table in the MIRM. So for specific R values, go to MIRM table 23.7, properties of gases, and you can look up the specific gas constant for air and water vapor. So if we take PV equals MRT and we rearrange it for mass, because that's what we're looking for, mass of water and mass of air, then we get PV over RT. And we know the temperature, and we can look up the specific gas constant. And we don't know the volume, but the volumes are the same, since the water vapor and the air are sharing the same volume. So those are actually going to cancel later. We'll leave it in for now. And then the pressure, this is the big one. we got to find these pressures. This pressure has to be not the total pressure, which we know, but the partial pressure of each respective gas within the container. So imagine you have this box of air, which we do here, and it's made up of dry air and water vapor, and they're sharing space in the same container, so it's all spread out. It's not like you can partition them separately. It all mixes together, of course. But just for graphical demonstration purposes, the total pressure inside this box is that 13.4 PSIA, but some of that pressure is coming from the dry air, partial pressure of air, and some of it is coming from the partial pressure of the water vapor. And it's the sum of those two partial pressures that makes up the total pressure. So let's write that down. Total pressure equals partial pressure of air plus partial pressure of water vapor. So a few reminders already. We, we've reminded ourselves about the definition of the specific humidity, the ideal gas law, and the concept of partial pressures. Now another thing we want to remind ourselves of is the definition of relative humidity. And I'll go back to using the, sometimes I write RH, but in a lot of the textbooks they use the Greek letter phi to represent relative humidity. So this is a number from zero to one. And it's defined as the ratio of the partial pressure of water divided by the maximum partial pressure that water can have at a particular temperature, which we call the saturation pressure. That's the partial pressure for when air is 100% humidity. So that's P sat at some temperature. In this case, the temperature of the air is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a number that we can look up in the steam table. So go to the MERM app 23A, and you'll be able to find this value. And you may have to interpolate, because again, it's every 2 degrees, so 84 and 86, and then take the average. No big deal. So if we rearrange this, for the partial pressure of water, it's going to be the relative humidity times P sat at 85 degrees. And we know the relative humidity is 80%, so 0.8. And when I look up this value in the steam table, it's 0.5969 PSIA. So if we calculate that, the partial pressure of water vapor in this particular case is 0.477. And then based on this formula, we can find the partial pressure of dry air. The partial pressure of air is going to be total pressure minus the partial pressure of water vapor. So that's 13.4 PSI minus 0.477, which is 12.923. So now we have P. We have the partial pressures of both water vapor and air for this particular situation. And I 
alluded to earlier, the fact that the volumes are going to cancel. So we actually have enough to go ahead and solve for the specific humidity now. Let's show how that's going to work. Substituting into the earlier formula, the mass of air, I'm subbing in here, is the partial pressure of air times the volume. And I don't have to use a subscript for the volume because air and water vapor share the same volume. Divided by the specific gas constant for air and the temperature, which has to be in degrees Rankin. Don't forget when we're dealing with these sorts of formulations, the gas constant is going to be per degree Rankin. So we have to use absolute temperatures. So you have to add 460. And then similarly, the mass of water is the partial pressure of water vapor times the volume divided by the specific gas constant for water and the temperature. And again, the temperatures are the same. They share those. And now using this definition, specific humidity is mass of water over mass of air. So if we divide this term by this term, we will have our humidity ratio. So the humidity ratio of both of states one and two, so I'll write it like this since they're the same, is the mass of water divided by the mass of air. And let's substitute everything in there so we show it all. Partial pressure of water times volume over gas constant of water times temperature and that's the numerator. And then denominator is partial pressure of air times volume divided by specific gas constant of air and temperature. So since the system is one system and it's the same volume and the same temperature, these terms both cancel out. And then if I just bring this up into the numerator and bring the partial pressure into the denominator, we get this expression, partial pressure of water times the gas constant of air divided by partial pressure of air times the gas constant for water vapor. These are all things we know or can look up. So let's substitute in. We found the partial pressure of water vapor. It was 0.477 PSIA. The gas constant is 53.35, and it has units of foot pound force per pound mass times degree Rankine. So that's our numerator and denominator partial pressure of air, which we said was 12.923 PSIA, divided by the specific gas constant for water, which is 85.78, same units as above, with the only difference being that these pound mass units, it's assumed and understood that since this is the gas constant for air, it's pound mass of dry air, and this is the pound mass of water vapor. So Ultimately, all the units cancel except for these, and the final result is pounds per pound, which is specifically pounds of water vapor per pound of dry air, which is exactly what we would expect for a humidity ratio. And you will be pleased to find out that that number is 0 0.02296 pounds of water per pound of air. And that is answer B. And it matches up almost exactly with what we got when we put into the site calc 0.02297 versus 0.02296, so very close.